So this is a Protel UPMS 1200 modem. You may recognize this from the previous video I had where I um, spoke about programming Protel payphones. So yeah, this is a specific modem manufactured for payphone programming. And if you're wondering why the case is off on this thing, it's because back when I originally got it, it had an issue where when I would plug it into the phone line and turn it on, it would immediately go off hook, which it's not supposed to do. It's supposed to get that signaling from the computer that it's interfaced with to go off hook when it needs to, where it'll it's supposed to pick up a phone when something ringing comes in. But no, it just went off hook. So I disassembled this to actually replace all the capacitors, which I could show you here real quick. Pretty easy, it was just a handful of capacitors. So all the electrolytics on here have been completely replaced. One lingering issue though that this has is that it seems like it's a little slow to release the phone line after a call completes. So that is usually caused by this yellow component right here, which you won't be able to read on this, I don't think. The focus isn't very good. But this is an Aromat DS2E MDC12V relay. So this is what actually sort of does the interfacing with the phone line in regards to triggering it when to go on and off hook. So of course, these relays can get sticky over time, so they're not perfect. Uh, this one's okay, but since I have replaced the capacitors anyway, I haven't put this thing fully back together, we might as well replace the relay. So I'm going to do that with this right here, which is a different brand. It's Axicom. This has a very long model number, but it's the same form factor, the same or similar specs. And this one is actually designed for telecom use. So you can get similar relays that are just commercial or industrial. This one's specifically for telecom. So it should have pretty good longevity. This one, I think, is just sort of your standard commercial relay. So if anything, this might be the better component overall. So aside from the relay, one other thing that's been bothering me, which you might have seen in the little intro bit, is the speaker down here. So this speaker seems to pick up just about every noise of any sort of electrical equipment put next to it. But more annoyingly, there's no way to silence it, whether through hardware or software. There's no volume knob on this modem like you might find on some of the, uh, the USR modems. If you try to do an M0 or L0 option in the init string through software, it doesn't do anything. And even worse than that is that after it hangs up a call, it's getting like phantom audio from the phone line with the fast busy. So if you're sitting in a quiet room with this, you just constantly hear this faint busy signal coming out of the speaker. So the next thing I'm going to do after installing the relay is actually taking this switch. So just a, a simple two position switch here. You can get these in packs of 10 really cheap on Amazon. So of course I have a couple packs of 10 because I always buy them and forget where I put them. But I'm gonna try to take this and find a way to maybe like mount it on the panel here or somewhere so that if I want to, I can still hear the audio coming out of the speaker, but I'm running this thing 24 seven. I don't need it squawking and squeaking in the middle of the night at full volume. So a switch to turn off the speaker is something I really wanna do. So before this, like I said, we're gonna get started with this relay. I have my soldering iron, the vacuum desolder pump, solder wick, solder flux, pretty much everything here that I should need. So I'm gonna start doing that. We'll take a break after it's installed and then um, afterwards move on to the speaker.
Okay, so the relay on the board has been replaced. You can see I've soldered it in here. Off camera, right after I soldered this and I um, let the alcohol dry, I went over and tested it and it works perfectly as far as I could tell. It actually does seem like it is improved. It is quicker to connect and disconnect to the phone line than previously. So now the next thing here is that I want to put this switch on the back and wire it to the speaker. So I've already popped this back panel out here. This thing is really strange because it's definitely like a plastic here, but this side is metal. So I went ahead and I sharpied um, with a straight edge here to try to get a line lined up with the, uh, the power hole. And then just kind of eyeballing it, trying to get a good center. So that bottom thicker line right there, that's the one I want to drill on at that X right there. So before I do that, let me just do a little bit of a fit test here. Again. Yeah, so if we look at the back here, um, so the power, maybe I can get it like this. So you can see there's a there's the, the capacitor that actually handles the ringing voltage followed by, I think they're like varistors back there. So that sticks up a little bit, but there's a pretty good amount of room here that the power switch takes up so that if we're mounting this, we could put a switch underneath and it shouldn't be much of an issue. Let me see here. Oh yeah, that, that should be fine. So, let's get that out of the way. Yeah, so I made this hole. I'm going to try to do, to hit it with a punch to get a starting point to actually drill through with the drill here. When I get that punch, I'll clean it up with some alcohol. So I got this ready. And then I'll start drilling. So I'm going to start out at my smallest drill bit size and work my way up to something that's um, the actual size of this sort of barrel part here of the switch. Just to make sure that I get a proper sized hole. And then I'll go ahead and actually assemble the switch on the panel and then start wiring everything up, which should be pretty simple. Yeah, so I'll start by trying to punch this. I'm going to do it on the table, which is a terrible idea here, but let's see. Oh yeah, that worked pretty well. So I got that. that punch there, cleaned it up with the alcohol. Yeah, so I'm gonna drill straight through this. I'm not too worried about making this something that's sort of irreversible. I find old equipment just with sort of like little random mods and hacks all the time and it doesn't really bother me. I have to remember that this this is going to be and is already a, a sort of workhorse modem. So this thing's in service. I'm doing anything I can to make it still usable, but this, it, though it's sort of a rare modem, it's not anything that's super valuable, it's not collectible, I don't think anybody's going to be screaming at me for drilling a little hole in it here. It's all in trying to make it more useful. So... So we got the first hole going through. I'm just going to slowly um, ramp up the bits here. That is in. So the final drill bit size that seemed to work was 15 64ths. Who would have thought? Yeah. So we're done with that. 
Now for the actual washer part here. So there's a lot of different ways that people choose to put these washers on here. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to do this washer with the teeth. Followed by this one. And then that gives that... It's kind of level now. I'm going to stick that through here. So... Let's see. I think maybe, maybe side to side is the way to go with this one. Because the power cable comes in at the top, but side to side, that seems to work pretty well. I'm going to put the hex washer or hex nut on top here. Hopefully I can line it up. There we go. So I think that, that should do it. All right. So in here, try to remember how this works. This goes here. Perfect, so that's what it's supposed to look fully assembled. So now let's go ahead and actually wire up the speaker here. Okay, so we want one of these leads still going to the speaker, the other one going to the switch in the back. So let me put this back here. probably take, I think any of these will do. Let me try to get this, this one on the bottom here, or should I say the, um, the right, and then I can just loop that back here. So that is, that is the one on the bottom of the board, okay. a little bit of heat. This should come right out. Yep. Okay. So this lead, it's a little small, but this should work fine. Okay, well, that's nicely connected there. Let me get my fan on here. Okay, so now I need to connect the board back to the other lead. Thought this length of wire might work. This is a little short. It's just something I had cut off. Let me get something a little bit longer here. Here's a much longer piece. That's good. Get these ends tinned up. solder this into the other side of the switch here.
Apologies that you can't see this too well. So these, very snug in there. Now if we pay attention back to the board here. Let's see here. So, oops. See, we want the so left on this side means right on this side. All right, so that's in there really nice. Clip away the excess. And then just get some IPA in there. So reassembly now should be pretty easy. I could turn this off and this off. Okay, so this goes here and faces out. And then I put this here. All right, so perfect. Back in, you got the little switch down here. Probably end up like labeling that um, with a sharpie or something. But yeah, it's nice and compact, fits all in here. I'm gonna go give it just one quick test, and then I will put the case back on it, wrap it up. We'll be all good to go. So here we have the modem put back together. I also took a little bit of goo gone to it here to get rid of the years of uh, adhesive and uh, tape that's been on it. But you could see, maybe back here, we have the switch. It's currently in the off position so we can actually program a phone here without incurring any noise from the speaker. So right off camera, I have a pay phone here. So let me just set it up here to be programmed. Okay, so now it should be calling up the modem briefly. We should see some lights change. We should see the screen back here change a little bit, but not hear anything. Okay, here we go, it's dialing. It's picked up. You might've heard that relay click for a second there. We've established connection at 1200 baud. And now it's going through the programming. So this should only take a couple of seconds to actually complete programming. Now that I have this modem where I want it to be, I can actually go about sort of cleaning off this coffee table. So the next step for this is to actually get all of this, not necessarily on, uh, maybe some components of this on a network rack that I have in a nearby closet, but get all of the equipment in there to free up this space but before I do that, I have a KVM that I'm going to hook some of these machines up to here so that they can be remote access by me, but also by other people in Filtel if we want to do some custom programming remotely. 
So we don't have to have this just sitting on a desk where only I can access it. So that covers uh, this particular video. We can see on the screen back here, programming is completed, it's already done. You might've heard that relay click off again and it's ready to receive another call. So yeah, this was some great progress in getting this modem sort of completely refurbished, modified so that it's silent. And I'm excited to get all of this squared away and start working on some more modem projects. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Hope to be back again soon with a new video.